Welcome everyone to a WCC tournament preview. I'm Andy Katz, pleased to be joined by ESPN's Sean Farnham and Dave Fleming. They will be calling the action for ESPN. Guys, first off, you've covered a lot of these games this regular season. We got an undefeated Gonzaga coming in at 24 and 0. I want to pause for a moment and first appreciate amid a pandemic uh, what they have accomplished to go undefeated, the journey to get to this point. I think it just speaks uh, very loudly to the mindset that this team had as far as the goals that they had set, the leadership that comes from within, in particular with Corey Kispert, uh, but also the aggressive nature in which Mark Few scheduled in the non-conference helped to kind of set the tone. The programs where the coaches and the kids balance, we take this seriously, we're here to win, we're here to learn and improve, but also, hey, you know what? This is college hoops. It's supposed to be fun. Uh, to me, the programs that have found that balance this year in particular are thriving like it is supposed to be fun for the kids and mark does a great job of keeping it light while also taking it seriously and i think that's a key to their success so let's look at the field itself based on what we've seen recently and looking at the bracket um it kind of looks like to me even though lmu is a five and st mary's a four if you were to look at one team on that side that could meet them in the semis that potentially could give them problems? I kind of look at LMU on that top half of the bracket. What do you guys see? Well, I mean, I think we, we saw just a couple days ago that LMU, if they hadn't just kicked the ball all over the gym, I mean, they actually showed up ready to play, ready to go. I've been impressed with LMU. I'm kind of with you. I mean, I think that is a team that has a chance to make a run in this tournament. Uh, they're playing hard. All those things I talked about a minute ago, like having fun, still totally engaged in the season. I think that applies to LMU. If you're going to compete with Gonzaga, you've got to be able to rebound the ball. You cannot allow them to get second chance points, opportunities, uh, you know, or, or get those easy runouts. For the first, you know, 15 minutes, 12 minutes of that first half, it was a it was a legitimate contest. And, and I think that LMU should walk away with some positives there. And I think that if they got to match up with Gonzaga again, I think they'd be excited for that matchup. And it's one that I'd like to see. So obviously they'd have to get by San Diego, San Francisco, and then St. Mary's to get to that point. Uh, the one thing on the Dons, I saw them at the beginning of the season. I was at the Mohegan Sun and they knocked off Virginia. They made threes, they look good. And they've kind of been all over the place. What, what are your impressions of the Dons? I mean, as of a team that in that top half, I mean, at least at times has shown like they could win a, a couple of games in a row. I think it, it, I think it's just been so disjointed. Dave, you and I were talking to Todd Golden a couple of weeks ago and just the limited number of practices that they've had where they've had their full complement of their team. And they were in a good rhythm early and then it's been disrupted ever since then. And the inconsistency in scheduling uh, has kind of hurt them. Feels like a team that has been hurt by this as much as almost any. Like just last year, momentum as a program, this year, the early win against a really good Virginia team, and then that momentum somehow, they just haven't been able to grab that back. All right, so let's look at the bottom part of the bracket. Pepperdine is the big enigma. I mean, there was a time where I was looking at their schedule and saying, whoa, wait a minute, they're done with Gonzaga and BYU. They had beaten BYU once. What if they rip them all out and go 13-3? and and then they go back to being Pepperdine and you're, they're all over the place and they can't be consistent. Uh, what are the chances that Pepperdine even could get to play BYU and knock off either Pacific or likely a Santa Clara winner of that game? I always just go say conference tournament wise and Dave, you and I saw this last year, Colby Ross put on one of the best individual performances I think I've ever seen going against Jordan Ford uh, in that game against St. Mary's where I think he finished with 43 points if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Colby Ross is a tremendous talent, and this is his final time. This is it. And can he go inside that locker room and look every single player in their eyes and say, hey, I don't care what we didn't do this year, what we didn't accomplish. There is enough talent on this on this Pepperdine roster right now to make it to that game on Monday night against BYU and potentially upset the Cougars and play in the championship game. If they all dial it in and say, forget about everything else, we're going to defend, we're going to rebound, and I'm Colby Ross, and I'm going to take over and make sure all of you are taken care of. I'm the all-time assist leader, but I'm also the all-time scorer here at Pepperdine. He's got that kind of talent that he can get it done. All right, so the last team here is BYU. Um, as of now, I think they're in the field. What does BYU have to accomplish in at least these two games, potentially, that they could play? I wouldn't be 100% certain about 
my spot in the field. I mean, I'm sure they're not thinking it that way, but just even as a fan, I, I wouldn't be 100% comfortable just because we it's a strange year and maybe it's going to be a little different with that selection committee. So I think they should, you know, they should be highly motivated to, to win a couple and make sure, even if it's just win one and make sure they get into that final, uh, that they, they meet up against the Zags. I think if they do that, they're going to be in the field. You look at how they've performed in the month of February and the net rankings absolutely loves BYU. And I think that's going to benefit them a, a ton. I think they're a lock in the NCAA tournament, given what you see going on in like conferences like the Pac-12, where Stanford has essentially played their way out of the NCAA tournament. And there's more teams right now playing their way out than there are playing their way in. So I think this year's team will have that chance to dance uh, and will have the opportunity to advance in the NCAA tournament.